already take two. What happened to the one take wonders? <laughs> I know, I know. We were doing quite well at home, weren't we? But yeah. this, is, this, this is the second take. We're back. Well, yeah, it, we are. In our new basement studio, temporary accommodation. But better than none, I'd say. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And um, I thought, you know, I'm going to throw us into the deep end. Oh, there's no easing in with Absolutely you coming not. back from the working from home, filming from home era even. Straight. Okay. Straight in what to debugging memory leaks. Everyone's favorite. I, I think it's the hardest thing to do with DevTools. 100% well, hardest... agree. Yeah. It, it, just in general, trying to do something like it, it, trying to figure out where, where memory is going, it's so much harder than you know, figuring out CSS problems, so much harder than figuring out performance problems. It's, it's already hard, I think, in garbage collected languages in general to figure out when is something being garbage collected and reason about that. And now put on top that our we have tools and dev tools, but they just give you numbers and then go, you figure it out. And we're going to look at some of those numbers. And Great. I, I figured out what some of them mean. Not all of them, but some of them. So what happened is uh, someone on GitHub uh, let us know that um, Squoosh. I know this app. Yeah, it's the, the thing we built. Uh, that we still we, go on we have about. We a couple more, but yeah. yeah well, you know, this is the one we still maintain. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. But they were saying it's using a lot of memory. I mean, and it does images. It does images, and they're big. So that's, that was the first thing I said. It's like, yeah, I mean, it's going to. Yeah. And they're like, no, no, no. It's using more and more memory. Uh, oh, it's over. that's not good. Classic memory leak territory. Yeah. So the first thing I want to do is like, you know, can I recreate this problem? So I went into our DevTools mm -hmm. uh, and into the old memory tab. Uh, How did they figure it out? Uh, they saw it in Task Manager. They saw uh, the memory going up and up and up, which you can use as well. But then it sort of mixes in yeah. like other processes. It's harder to see. Like, I could imagine it's the kind of thing where Chrome sometimes grabs memory. And even though the process, the, the, the renderer process itself freezes back up, Chrome doesn't give it back because it might need it or something. Yep. That's classically <laughs> Chrome behavior. I, I might need all of your memory, so I'll take it now. Um, but yeah, this, this is how I recreated it. And we got a, a comment a couple of episodes ago where someone was saying, look, I watch your episodes on my mobile, and I struggle to read some of the code. Can you make the code bigger? Sorry, mate. You're not going <laughs> to like this one, because the, the, the tools are dense. They're yeah. really, really dense. I think they're mostly glorified spreadsheets, lots yep. of numbers. And so you either get big numbers, but only see a third of the data that's available, or you make them smaller. Yeah, I've zoomed it in as much as I can. Look, I'll zoom it in a little bit more. But that's as much as we can do. Uh, but I, you'll see in these videos, I'm struggling even with some of the column sizes because I've, I've zoomed it maybe slightly too much. Anyway, let's, let's see how easy this is to All understand. Right. The first thing I did is take a heap snapshot. When you press that button, what it does is it does uh, a, an aggressive piece of garbage collection and then goes and right. finds everything uh, that JavaScript has caused or so has some So it basically makes sure that everything that can be deleted is deleted. And then it measures how much you have on your heap, because yes. that's the part where JavaScript objects live. Well, you'll see that there's, there's a few icons. There's a bin icon, and there's a no icon. And the <laughs> bin icon, what does that do? That runs garbage collection. It does, yes. Well done. Whereas the <laughs> no icon deletes things, like you know, the, whereas, the actual snapshots. Yeah, traditionally, the bin for throwing stuff away. That's not what's happening here. It's just for garbage collection. But you don't actually need to press that. It's done automatically. OK, and now um, I know an array has a shallow size of 590,000, which is 22%. That is very insightful. Yes. And so it's like we're using 2 megabytes or 2.7 megabytes. Not very interesting. But now I've opened an image. I've taken another heap snapshot. We're up to 80 megabytes. That makes sense for that image, I'd say. Like it's a, Do you remember the, the resolution? Uh, like three thousand by something. Three. Yeah. It's a big image. Three by two. Something. So it's like six million pixels. So twenty-four million bytes. Yeah. I, I, I thought. Oh, are you going to see this maths through? Are you going to do? Yeah. A whole lot. Sounds about right. Sounds about right. Excellent. Cool. <laughs> um, and that's yeah. It sounded about right to me. Like just memory going up isn't a problem. We've loaded a big image, and now we have a big image's worth of memory being used. <laughs> Uh, you can actually see this uh, on the side there. Um, what I can do is do this comparison and say, hey, show me the difference between snapshot one and snapshot two. And we can see here there's these three array buffers, 40 megabytes each. Well, there's, uh, two of them are 40 megabytes, and one of them is significantly less. How, how 
how did you know to look there? Because there's also many other things you could have unfolded. It was the biggest things there, ah. which is usually the first thing to do. Is there anything like it's memory's gone up a lot? But is there anything big? So, it, it, this stuff gets a lot harder if it's lots of little things. Thankfully for this one, uh, as yeah. memory debugging goes, it was pretty easy because it's three big things. So there's two JS arrays that are exactly the same size. I'm assuming that is the copy of the image on the main thread and the other one from the worker, because we're probably going to have two copies of the image flying around. So you, you raise an interesting point here. Is like I think if if I'm looking at performance, I can just go to a random website and I can look at the the performance timeline and I can come up with some decent recommendation. Mm. I would say when you're debugging memory stuff, you really need some knowledge of the app. Yeah. Which is what you were talking about there. So I can actually tell you. So what we've done here is I, I've clicked into uh, one of these arrays and gone into the retainers, which shows you all of the, uh, you know, the, the array is the, the leaf node. And now we're going back up things who's that have reference the references to, to that array. And who's holding a yes. reference to the thing that's holding the reference? So we can see the next thing on the tree there is uh, uint8 clamped array. And then the next thing is image data. So there you go. That's There's a big clue. And yes, um, it, we've got these two 40 megabyte things. It's decoded image data. It's the one on the left, which is the original image. And it's the one on the right, which is the ah. encoded version, then decoded. And the third one the is third 860K, one. which is, funnily enough, exactly the size of the compressed image. So it's probably that one. Good eyes. Yes, that is the encoded JPEG. So that's the three. And you know, with app knowledge, we can look at that and go, that's fine. Working as intended. Working as intended. Mm. So the next phase is to close that. Don't do a reload because we're looking for leaks. Yes. So just close it within the app, reload it, and then do another heap snapshot. Uh, and at that point, we can see it's oh, twice the memory. Twice the memory. And again, some app knowledge comes into this because that might be fine because it might be doing some caching. You might be you might have a way to go back to the previous image. You've got mm. to keep it in memory. Yeah, maybe. Um, but we, we know don't. we don't do that. <laughs> we we do have some caching, but we know the caching is gone when you press that. Yeah. That X. Uh, so, so you, you're still in the summary, right? So I guess you could do a comparison. That again. is what I'm going to do. Um, so yeah, we can see we've got like a lot more of those array buffers than we had before. We had uh, three before. We now have six. So is this the comparison to snapshot one or snapshot two? So this is just the raw snapshot three right now. Oh. Uh, but let's let's take a look. Let's have a you know compare it to snapshot two. Oh, you can select which one to compare to. Yes. Okay. And and so we can see now that there's some stuff being created, some stuff being freed, but we're still ending up with more than we intended. This is not really a useful view, because we, we know that the, there are these six array buffers still in memory. Mm -hmm. But we really want to know, well, some of those we need, because they're on screen. Like yeah. the, the images are on screen. What we want to know is, like, where are the ones that probably shouldn't be around anymore? And to yeah, do I mean, that, the fact that we have, it looks like the ones at the bottom are the ones that are being freed. So two 40 megabyte things were freed. Good, because those were probably the previous image. We didn't want those anymore. And yet, four 40 megabytes one are being created. That seems like too, too many. Yes, absolutely. And so what I've done here is I'm now showing the objects allocated between snapshot one and snapshot two mm -hmm. that are still around in snapshot three. OK. Yeah, so these are the ones that we would expect to be gone, because they were created you know, for that first showing of the image, but they are still there for snapshot three. So I these... didn't know this tool could do that. And yeah, sometimes you just want to use the, the other kind of comparison, but this this really narrows it down to the ones that we yeah, know should be gone. Because if we know, again, with that knowledge, like everything created between snapshot one and snapshot two should not exist once we go back to the landing page and start over, that's a big red flag. Absolutely. Yeah. So now it's trying to find out where, you know, why are they there? Yeah, where do they come from? Where, where, yes. And so again, we can click into it, look at these retainers, which shows all of the things that are holding onto that in memory. We're seeing its image data. We saw that before. Write compressed. They, we know that that's a term from within Squoosh's source code. So that, yeah, that all makes sense. And there is one red flag there in that list for me, and that is detached HTML element. Hmm. So a detached HTML element is an HTML element that's no longer in the document. And that isn't necessarily a bad thing. You could have like a menu in your app yeah, that, that you, you put in the DOM, and the user clicks the menu thing. And then when they click away, you take the DOM element out, but you hold on to it for later. Yeah. But again, a bit of app knowledge comes into play here. I know we don't. It shouldn't. Do so this makes me think that we probably hold a reference to this DOM element in one of our component states and don't. Hey, you don't have to guess. 
we've got tooling now. Ooh. So what I would do is try and find out which element this is. And a, a handy way of doing that is similar to what you see in, in other parts of DevTools. You can right click and go uh, store as global variable. Very and handy. there it is. And it's our, our two up custom two element. Up. It's, it's a good up. element. So that's the one that's got, it shows the image either side and you, you swipe either side for mm -hmm. it. And so it's like, right. And again, that confirms to me, we don't cache those. No, that, they really shouldn't be, be around from a previous run. Yeah. So something happened here that caught me out when I was debugging this for reals is at this point, it is useless to do another heap snapshot and do more testing because I have just stored something as a global variable. Yeah, and that will mess with the results. <laughs> Same with console logs. Like if you're doing console logs, it's going to it, it's going to create memory leaks because those things have got to stay in the console and be unfoldable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, all right, let's try and find out where this where this two up is. Why is it there? Uh, so again, you want to sort of dig further and further down, or like you know, towards the root of the tree. There are these internal nodes. Those are C plus plus functions within Chrome. Right. Apparently, we might get those named at some point, but they're all called internal node right now, which is <laughs> very, very unhelpful. But before that, there is V8 event listener. And we know what event listeners are. I'm assuming. Yeah. Uh, and just above that is a link that we can press to some code. And that takes us here. On key down. On key down. Sounds like an event listener. Is this all a ruse to tell me that a PR that I merged and reviewed introduced a memory leak. Yep, but it's OK, because there's another one that I, I merged that caused the same problem. And we'll look <laughs> at that in a second. But yes, yeah, so we can see that here. Uh, we've got a window, add event, listener, key down. Uh, and that is the source of our leak. The problem here is, is that this listener is on the window object. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's going to continue to fire even after the element is gone, because it's on the window. So you know, we create this two of element. We take it away. And but when you yes. press keys, it's still firing that event. And we do the trick, I think, where this on key down gets bound to this, so we don't have to worry about retaining this. It's it doesn't, but it, it has a closure to it. It's an error function. It's an error function. Okay, same same deal then. Okay. So the way of fixing this, and apologies, this is because this is a real world case. This is a real world bug. Squish has written TypeScript. Apologies if you're not used to TypeScript, but it's it's JavaScript. It's mostly JavaScript. Uh, this is our constructor for our custom element for the two up. I'm mm -hmm. um, going to go and find out where that, that, that event listener is. Uh, it's further down here uh, in the constructor for the, for the event, for the, for the element. Uh, this is, with custom elements, this is a bad place to be putting an event listener. Because um, what we want to do is we only need this listener when the element is in the document. We should do it on, on attached callback, attached callback. Connected callback. Connected callback. Close. It's been a while, I just realized, since I've written a custom element. Shame on me. No, it's, it, I had to look this stuff up as well. Uh, so I, I think we already have a function for that. There we go, connected callback. So it is just moving uh, the, the listener there. But then we need we to do the reverse. We disconnect it, don't we? We need disconnected callback, which is when it's taken out of the document. So there it goes. And uh, if you copy and paste a lot like I do, make sure you change it to remove event listener. <laughs> I have created bugs. <laughs> where my disconnected thing is actually just adding another listener. Do that. And that is the problem well solved. Uh, the right thing to do is to confirm that by going back into your app, hit refresh, pick up the new code, and then just uh, do the same thing. Open the image, heap, uh, close the image, open the image, heap. Easy well, as that. <laughs> <laughs> just remember those steps. But it's still twice as much memory. Yeah, it's still twice as much. It's because it's not fixed, is it? Oh. Uh, it is fixed. Like, uh, when I first saw that, I was like, well, either that wasn't a problem, or there are more problems. I can tell you now there were more problems. Great. So we're back here again. Same business. Interesting, um, because now, now the, the retainer chain, that just sounds like something the, the dentist puts in your mouth. <laughs> but yeah, the retainer chain should be different now, shouldn't it? It is going to be different. So we're going to look at the same array buffer. and. There is no detached HTML element there. So we have solved win. the problem. <laughs> A small win with zero effect. Uh, but again, we're now just doing the same thing. I had a quick question then, actually. So this the, the chain of retainers is obviously a chain here. But multiple elements can be holding a reference to the same leaf. Can we see all of them? Yes, you scroll down, you'll see them all. Okay. But sometimes some of them are false uh, because <laughs> Well, because some of them will have a reference to it, but it would have otherwise been collected. 
So sometimes you need to find the one that is actually the real retainer. It normally does a good job of making sure it's the one at the top. Not okay. always. OK. Um, but again, it's just looking at it. And sometimes it's just finding out, like, where is this, where is this stuff? So clicking through some code. This is a Preact component this time, mm -hmm. not a web component. Looking at the constructor isn't helping me at all figure out. It knows roughly where it is, but it's not helping me. We've got again. Yeah, I felt like this line listener. wasn't very significant. <laughs> it, it told me what component it was in, but yeah, it was insignificant. It was just telling me it's this is an instance of this class. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Further down, we've got an event listener. There's a bigger clue. Um, move around for this tooltip to get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> and again, here we've, we've got on mobile width change. We've got an event listener here. Um, again, it's it, it's just a function, so it's finding out well where is that made into an event yeah. listener. And we've got width query add listener, um, which when I saw this, I, I then knew what it was because I'm familiar with this code. But uh, you, know, you can chase it yeah, further. This is not an source. add event. This is add listener. So this is some custom code. No, this is match media. And match oh, media wow. uses, uh, you can use add event listener, um, but it, it also uses add listener. And Safari doesn't support add event listener, or it didn't at some point. At uh, one point on stage in Chrome Dev Summit, the last on stage Chrome Dev Summit, I broke the app before going on stage. And it was because I replaced one of these things from ad listener to ad event listener. And it didn't work in Safari. And everyone in the audience was like, it's not working on my phone. That was why. So I just use ad listener now, even though you'll see it draws a line. Of, deprecated. Over it. Yeah, because it's deprecated. <laughs> that's why that's happening. Uh, with a Preact component, that's actually fine there in the constructor. But it, this is the same problem as before. We've got a you know, width query, this is something that's happening on the window object, mm. but we're using it with a component, so it's keeping it alive. So I just need to do what I did before. This is not a, a custom element. This is a Preact component, so it's a different but life cycle. But similar callbacks exist. In this one, it's component will unmount, remove listener, job done. Deprecated. Deprecated. <laughs> <laughs> it works. <laughs> it's fine. And so yeah, this is it. Just uh, keep snapshot, close. Open again. I... Mirror signal maneuver. <laughs> hey, look at that. And it's sorted. And that Brilliant. Was it. Well, I, once I saw that, I was like, oh, OK, there we go. We've well, actually... it took two event listeners. And yes, but both a very similar problem. And event listeners are going to be the problem. The, it is the, the cliche for memory because it's always dangling event listeners. Yeah, are... unintentional globals or event listeners, uh, it, it tends to be. So yeah, that was it. That was, that was problem solved. We shipped it. Excellent. Um, well, you. But you know, we've we've got a. I, I would say I've got a bias towards Chrome. You probably do as well because it's where the money comes from. That pays the bills. Um, but I thought I'd have a look at the the similar tools in in other browsers. Oh. Uh, so this is Firefox, uh, and it has a very similar menu. Uh, it has a heap snapshot button. There we go, eighty megabytes. You get this. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I like it, that. It helps you really tell where the memory is spent very quickly. <laughs> this is big, so we make it big. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, there's an array buffer there. There's 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 a bit of memory. You, there's a similar list view. I would say I I find these tools harder to use. It, it could be biased, but I find it really hard to find the attribution of what's holding on to, to ah. an object in this, um, especially when it comes to listeners and maps. But here's a, here's a fun one. Um, so close it, open again. Going to take another heap snapshot there. Oh, no. 160 megabytes. Oh, this is the fixed version. This is the fixed version. Oh, I thought you were going to show me, walk me through the same Oh, the whole thing? thing? No, no, no. They're already making signals that this episode's getting a bit long. So oh, there's <laughs> more leaks in Firefox. Or are they, they, do they not run some forced garbage collection? They don't. You have to go to ah. About Memory and press this hidden button. Minimize the memory usage. Minimize memory so usage. So basically, it had twice memory because the old references were still around. Nobody yep. was holding on to them. They are collectible, but haven't been collected yet. Exactly. And so I do that, and we're back down to, to 80. So there's a gotcha. There's something to watch out for if you're using this. That makes sense. Uh, and then finally, Safari in their timeline. Look, nice symbols. Not there at first. Uh, I had to go into this, this little edit menu and enable it. But there's a memory line there. Mm. Um, but you, you hit record, and you start doing stuff. And it will show you, look, there's some memory gone up. Um, the same business again. Close it and open it again. And oh, memory's going up again. So where's the forced garbage collection button? Uh, there isn't one, uh, because this is a memory leak. 
<laughs> yeah. So you get these little S things, and they're heap snapshots. You don't you don't get to choose when they happen, but they always one always happens at the end, which is useful. Um, so we can dive into that here, and we we see something that's very similar to what we had in Chrome. Again, I find attribution a lot harder to deal with in this one versus Chrome. But in this case, it, we've got a lot of canvas elements. Oh. And it says there's a reader article something. Um, you can click through to it, and it Hang gives on. you on the console. Uh, so reader article find a JS element with uh, cached binding rects number 14. This is not our code. No, this seems like this is the reading mode. I talked to a Safari engineer, and they went, uh, this is not your problem. This is our problem. We've got to go fix this now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so even though yeah, I'm not used to these particular tools, uh, it, it helped me find an issue in Safari. Um, so they're, they're going to fix that now, uh, which is good. Yes, and I, I feel it is part of their reader code. Because this, this bug doesn't, well, they were able to do a, a raw WebKit build and confirm you don't have a memory leak in WebKit. You do in Safari because of That's internal Safari things. Uh, yeah, and it wasn't even the only browser bug I found as part of this. I actually found that resize observers leak in all browsers. Um, Always good. Although it's now fixed in Chrome, and it's fixed in uh, WebKit, and I think it's fixed in Firefox as well. I'll put a link to that in the description if you want to see more about that. Um, but yes, right now, it's advisable to manually disconnect your intersection observers and resize observers. These slides took a long time to do, because I kept running into actual <laughs> browser bugs to solve. But there we go. Um, that is how to to fix some real in the wild memory leaks. Well, yeah, I, I learned something, Jake. So did I. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a heap snapshot. Mm -hmm. A heap snapshot <laughs> profile. Right. Let's see if I can go back and do that again. I don't know. <laughs> 